Hello friends, this video on heredity and evolution part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so let us start with these basics. First question, what happens to the chromosome numbers during reproduction? So the reproduction which we am talking about here is sexual reproduction because the scenario in case of sexual reproduction is more complex. Like in asexual reproduction, what happens? It is just a copy of the parent. So they are the, the offsprings are generally genetically similar to the parents, but there are small differences sometimes and that arises due to the faulty copying of DNA, right? But in case of sexual reproduction, there is a lot more things involved because one parent contributes some traits, the other parent contributes some other traits. So that combination that decides what characteristics will the offspring actually have, right? So let us talk about the sexual reproduction here. So we have already discussed the process of sexual reproduction in human beings in our previous lesson, right? So now here, if you see, you can see an egg cell and a sperm, right? So when they both fuse together, they form a zygote. And these zygote, upon repeated divisions, gradually form an embryo. And the embryo later forms the fetus. And the fetus, after nine months, takes birth in the form of a small baby, right? That, that is what we talked about in sexual reproduction. Now, normally... Where are these chromosomes? What are chromosomes? I don't think I need to explain that again, right? We, have, we already know what are chromosomes. In previous lesson, we have talked about it. So they are located inside the nucleus of a cell. Now cells are present all over our body. Now all these cells have chromosomes which exist in pairs. So all the cells inside our body, they will consist of chromosomes which exist in pairs. That means there will be two chromosomes existing together. So there will always be two chromosomes existing in pairs, right? So and these kind of cells which have chromosomes in pairs, they are known as diploid cells, right? So there are two types of cells based on how chromosomes are present there. If chromosomes exist in pairs, they are known as diploid cells. If chromosomes exist singly, they are known as haploid cells. Clear? So now, inside human being, total how many chromosomes are present? There are a total of 46 chromosomes. So there is a new term which is introduced here. That is diploid and haploid. So whatever new terms we come across now, we'll just make a note of it so that we can discuss them later in detail. Right? Okay. Now in human beings, so every human being has a total of 46 chromosomes in each cell. And each of these chromosomes exist in pairs. Right? So that means how many pairs? 23 pairs of chromosomes exist. In our previous lesson also we talked about it. The sex cells, that means the sperm cell and the egg cell, these are the specialized cells which are not diploid. They are haploid. That is, they have half the amount of gene or half the number of chromosomes. So therefore, the sex cells or the gametes, whatever you call them, they have half the number of chromosomes. That is, these cells are haploid. So how many chromosomes do they have? They have 23 chromosomes because they do not have chromosomes in pair. Right? So that is the difference between all other cells in the body and the specialized sex cells or the gametes. Clear? Okay. Now what happens during reproduction? So for reproduction in human beings it is sexual. So we need two parents. Right? So one is a father, the other one is mother. So they both are involved in the process of reproduction. Now how are they involved in the process of reproduction? What actually happens? From the father's body, that is from the body of the human male, a sperm is produced. So the father releases the sperms. Now this sperm during the process of sexual reproduction enters inside the mother's body and it fuses with the egg cell of the mother body. 
right when these two fuses a zygote is formed now just now i mentioned that what is the sperm sperm is a haploid right now what will the sperm consist of now inside the father's body if you look at the father's body inside the father's body there are a total of in each and every cell i'm just talking about any cell inside the body so any cell inside the body will consist of 46 chromosomes right now out of these 46 chromosomes 44 chromosomes are not the sex chromosomes but two chromosomes are sex chromosomes that means these 46 chromosomes are actually 44 autosomes and two sex chromosomes now what are autosomes and what are sex chromosomes they are again some new terms we are hearing autosomes and sex chromosomes now for now you can just understand it in this way that sex chromosomes are those chromosomes which decide the sex of the of a particular individual so sex chromosome will decide whether that individual is a male or a female so that is the purpose of sex chromosome what are autosomes they will control all other characteristics of the body so they will not decide sex so these 46 chromosomes are actually 44 autosomes and two sex chromosomes and they all exist in pairs similarly inside the mother body so inside the mother's body also there are so many cells and each cell has similarly 46 chromosomes right out of this 46 chromosomes there are 44 autosomes and two sex chromosomes now what happens during reproduction during reproduction this father will contribute half of the autosomes and half of the sex chromosomes that means how much what will the father contribute the father will contribute 22 autosomes and one sex chromosome similarly what will the mother contribute the mother will contribute 22 autosome and one sex chromosome right and how will they contribute they will contribute via these sperm and egg cells so what does the sperm consist of the sperm consists of 22 autosomes and one sex chromosome right the sperm is nothing but the carrier so the sperm consists of 22 chromosomes and one sex chromosome so that is why we say that sperm is a haploid because in haploid cells they have half the total number of chromosomes which are present in all other cells of the body so sperm has a total of 23 chromosomes similarly egg has a total of 23 chromosomes and that is why egg and sperm are haploid now these sperm and egg will combine together and they will form zygote right now what will the zygote consist of so 22 autosomes of sperm combined with 22 autosomes of egg so 44 autosomes again and one sex chromosome of sperm will combine with one sex chromosome of egg so two sex chromosomes again so a total of 46 chromosomes right so that is how now this zygote is will then grow and develop and become a new individual so that is how every individual gets 46 chromosomes from their parents during sexual reproduction right so what did we understand with this discussion we understood that both the parents contribute equally during sexual reproduction clear so please make sure that this concept is very very clear because based on these concepts we will talk about many other things so if this is not clear you are not going to understand what i'm going to talk in in the next few slides right so what do we see that these haploid sex cells that is the sperm and the egg cells they contain one representative of each type of chromosome let me take a small example here let me take the example of the eye color now let us suppose this father will contribute one chromosome from each pair as i said the father has 23 pairs of chromosomes right so one one chromosome he will take out from each pair and he will give it for the kid so that is how he will give 22 autosomes and one sex chromosomes now let us take the example of hair color now let us suppose for hair color the father has some traits say the father has a brown 
Remember, sorry, I'm talking about eye color. Let us suppose that the father has a brown eye. Right? So what will the father do? The one chromosome with the which the father donates is for brown eye color. Similarly, the mother contributes a blue eye color. So these two chromosomes will pair up again. So the brown eye color chromosome will pair up with the blue eye color chromosome. For example, if this is the father, this is the mother. Let us suppose father contributes a brown eye color chromosome. The mother contributed a blue eye color chromosome. Now after fertilization, the sperm and egg combined. So these two chromosomes paired up. Right? So one is for brown eye color and the other one is for blue eye color. So which one will dominate? Brown eye color will dominate. So therefore the kid will have a brown eye color. Right? So that means this... Uh, sperms and the egg cells they will contain one representative of each type of chromosome so they will not carry the pair from each parent so they will take one representative from father one representative from mother and after fertilization they will combine the two so they will pair up again okay so with this the process is clear so now we will talk about these new terms which we came across thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.